Alright, so we're back with the only game where the more you break science, the better it gets. It's Universe Sandbox 2. I've said it before, but Universe Sandbox is a game about extremes. Damn it. And uh, because of that, I want to try an extreme today. I've never really, like, intentionally tried to break the game, but I think we could probably do it. In general, one of the best ways to break a game is with math. And in order to break the game with math, we're going to use our lord and savior, the sun. The sun is a glorious beast unless you live in Florida like me. Then all it does is remain hot all the time and keep the humidity about 12,000%. So what I want to do is we're going to start making the sun hotter and hotter. And eventually this sun will get so hot that I'm pretty sure the game will go into error mode. At that point, that's when stuff like weird stuff should start to happen. Like things that don't make scientific sense. I like it when things don't make scientific sense. At some point, I have to go back into my videos and try and estimate what the kill amount is in all of the universe sandboxes. So normally what would happen is when you increase the temperature of the sun, it likes to increase the mass of the sun, but I don't want that to happen. So we gonna lock this boo sheet and now we can increase the temperature of the sun at our leisure. Now, because I don't want the earth to just immediately boil away, we're gonna do this in increments until we get into the realm where I really don't know what's gonna happen. I think this game has never crashed on me. I've never gotten it to crash somehow. So maybe that'll happen finally. Well, the first thing that happened was the sun turned into the color that I like more than the sun's regular color, which is blue, because blue is freaking awesome. It also kind of looks like a glowing earth. Right now, you'll notice that the earth is still a nice calm 15.5 degrees Celsius. That's just because we don't know that we're dead yet. I'm not a scientist, but I'm pretty sure that there's no way in hell that the earth is gonna survive the sun being almost twice as hot as it is normally. I can move time along and we can take a guesstimation, but if I, yeah, right here. Okay, the surface temperature just jumped a lot. This is interesting, whatever's happening over here. I think that's our polar ice caps melting. So several hours have passed and it's only at 40 degrees Celsius. I didn't expect this. I kind of expected it to get a lot hotter, a lot faster. I'm not going to try and pretend to be smart. I do know that light takes a while to reach its target, but I kind of thought like, you know, all the heat and the, and the light would reach here at once. Gray, please don't kill Australia. You know, if I had to guess, Australia will probably be the last to die because when the surface of the earth begins to vaporize, uh, it's all the way in the bottom, you know? So uh, the down under should be protected. Mm, 60.3 degrees Celsius. Now everyone gets to know what it feels like in Florida. I'm just curious, how's everyone else making out? Mercury, how you doing? Only 460 degrees Celsius? Those are rookie numbers. Oh, look everyone, from here I can see that Venus has turned into a flaming ball of molten sadness. Mm, 1001 degrees Celsius. Couldn't have done that if I tried. Actually, on a somewhat related side note, is Mars livable yet? I, uh, I vastly underestimated how hot Mars would be. 110 degrees Celsius, considering the Earth's only at what? What kind of lies are these? I don't know how the Earth got back to 15 degrees Celsius. I'm pretty sure it was at like 60 something before. Oh, well, we'll speed time up a little bit because that's how we do. Well, the Earth is a burning cesspool of sadness, but it's only at uh, 223 degrees Celsius. I mean, it could have been a lot worse, right? So yeah, Earth's looking a little bit more toasty now. Uh, on the plus side, Neptune is at a negative 77. Jupiter rolling around at 179. Pluto's only negative 126. That's not bad. Hey, Saturn's at 67. Saturn's the new Florida. More heat. Okay, so we've basically doubled the heat yet again. Uh, everything still looks okay. I mean, everything's burning, but, you know, nothing's vaporized yet. Neptune's now 63 degrees Celsius. Jupiter's hanging out at 503. But Uranus, 155. Fair enough. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and double this. I should probably get right down into these into these uh, planets just in case they like immediately spontaneously can buzz. I think they're still gonna be okay. Yeah, Venus is doing fine. Neptune's starting to glow. When Neptune starts to glow, that means some bad ah! going down. Double it again. Okay, 
Mercury has turned into something awesome. I think it's like in mid vaporization. That is a cool friggin- hold on, we need to look at this. Oh yeah. Oh, that's the stuff. You know the great thing about space is that you cannot know a damn thing about it and recognize that this is pretty sweet. Or you could probably know the scientific reason that Mercury kind of looks like a cotton ball right now. Being 17,000 degrees Celsius is probably part of it. Yep, the density is burning away, Mercury. So Venus and Earth are not quite there yet. Earth is looking... Never mind. I think Earth just got there. Okay. Earth immediately vaporized. That happened a lot faster than Mercury. How about you, Venus? You planning on, like, instantaneously disappearing on me? Still around? Okay. Now it's starting to have an epileptic seizure. Oddly, none of the density is going down yet. You like sweet rave parties? Venus likes sweet rave parties. I'm almost sure there's a rave called Venus, so this is very fitting. Oh, no, God. It just... Stopped. It just stabilized. It stopped smoking. Why? You're supposed to burn into nothingness. What is going- what is happening? It's still burning, but the burning is way over here. Oh, okay. Well, there's only one thing that we can do in this instance. Double temperature. Oh, uh, whoop. Hey. Well. That was quick. Jupiter's still here. Double it again. Okay, Jupiter is starting to take some damage. Jupiter is- is- slowly broiling away. Jupiter kind of stabilized. The mass of Jupiter is going down real damn fast though. It's like an exfoliant. Um, think about it like purging. We're purging Jupiter of all the impurities. It just so happens that all Jupiter is is impurities. So uh, it's getting the hell purged out of it. That's amazing. At the end of the at the end of the rave was an actual disco ball. I managed to pause it right on the weird vapor-like disco ball. Nice. That moment when Jupiter has a radius of 59 kilometers. There's still some planets left. So we're gonna go into the ridiculous realm and just pump this way the hell up. All right, I imagine Neptune will be, there we go. Everything's pretty much gone now. There's all these little fragments and the fragments are still there. How hot does this have to get before even the fragments don't exist anymore? Or will the fragments always exist? And then in a second here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take like the earth and put it next to the sun, but I'm gonna pump the temperature up so high that hopefully we go into the air realm. Can you reach the air realm? You can absolutely reach the realm. What the hell happened to the sun? The sun is gone. The sun got so, so hot that it disintegrated. Anytime you've got a bunch of debris, it's like cat litter all over the universe. Just go ahead and get yourself the vacuum of space. Crap. That was not the vacuum of space. That was a galaxy. The vacuum of space. A black hole. In fact, I can probably just take the mass and increase that for the black hole too. <laughs> See? Look at how quickly it works. It's like a Roomba. Mm. That's what I like to see. Okay. Here's the Earth. Here's the Sun. I put them close together because reasons. I slowed time way the hell down and now we're going to make sure that the sun has a level of heat that simply shouldn't be possible. Oh, oh shouldn't have done that. Yeah, let's go ahead and lock that. Alrighty. Oh, what the hell? Okay, time is really slowed down and the earth is already starting to vaporize. What's the temperature? What is that? 13 million degrees Celsius? There we go. I'm just gonna keep clicking on this. I don't know really what it means or what it does, but I'm just gonna keep clicking just to see what happens. Finally did it. I crashed it. All right, we'll go, we'll go a little less than that. Okay, so there's the earth immediately being vaporized. So let, what the hell? What just happened? Where'd my son go? Uh, does the earth still technically exist? It absolutely does at like, 200 million degrees Celsius. Maybe the Earth can come back from this, you know? Maybe everything's gonna be all right. Okay. The Earth is still there. It's, it's in a glo- Okay. I got plenty more Earths where that came from. All right, the Earth's starting to get pretty hot. What's interesting is, is even though it's 6,900 degrees Celsius, time is so slow that the Earth forgot to combust. Oh, there it is. It just took a minute. The sun decided to disappear again, but I got the Earth in mid-vaporization. That is freaking awesome. Oh, 
there's still something left of it. That's a lot of degrees Celsius. <laughs> and the cloud of what is left of the Earth is pretty friggin' cool. I'm telling you, do you need to be educated to understand that this looks awesome? I'm <laughs> living proof that you don't. You can throw on your most uh, chilled out trance dance music and just watch as the Earth continues to anally vomit what's left of its mass into space. You know, I never really caught the vaporization just like this, but it was pretty much perfect. Okay, we've been beating up the Earth. I'm gonna put a bunch of planets surrounding the sun and then make it super hot like that. Yep, all these, all of them. I'm gonna put Kepler in here too, because I like that planet. If you notice, a bunch of the dust from the previous Earth is still just lingering in space. It's like a warning to all the other planets to not be a part of any experiment Gray ever does. All right, let's rock and roll. Okay, there we go. Everything is starting to uh, discombobulate as it often does. A little bit more right there, that's hot. Oh yeah, okay, let's keep moving. There, okay, I can't even see anymore. What the hell happened? Did I destroy the game or is it just a giant pocket of sediment? Let me back out of- <laughs> What the hell happened? That is way more mass than I had. That Like, that many planets shouldn't have done this. Is it because the sun blew up too? Hold on, let me find out here. I'm gonna move time and space along. And we'll- Okay. Oh, my- Yep, sun's gone. Okay, maybe we don't need to go quite that hot. I've got two Keplers this time. The one talked his dumbass friend into coming with him. Alright, let's go around- this much. We'll go right about there. That should be plenty of temperature to see what happens to- Okay, why does the sun just like to spontaneously disappear? I'm pretty sure that everything will still vaporize except for the Keplers because they do whatever they want. That's interesting. How's everyone else doing? So far so good. Jupiter, Saturn, okay. Things are starting to glow. That's interesting. Oh, different colors. Neptune, nice. We've got different shades of blue and or white. Well, all that's happening with Kepler is it's choking on the goo. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Mercury over here is producing a fantastic font of regret, as well as Venus. Well, this is nice. We have color-coded planetary destruction. Can't say I've ever done that before. I'm like the uh, interior decorator of life ending. That's, uh, it's not bad. Earth is still spewing chunks out. And at this point, a few things have vaporized, but uh, the last planets over here are standing strong. Oh yeah. I'm sure, given a couple years, the temperature will return back to normal and everything will be just fine. Never mind. One of the Keplers just got set on fire. Don't really know why. Okay, that looks awesome. You can just kind of linger right over here. There we go. So that, that one, it was different because it decided to explode. You don't usually have them up and detonate like that. Typically, they just kind of throw particulates outward. Oh, it's really blowing up. I'm gonna tell you, this planet is like the Michael Bay of planets. Are you gonna, oh, fragments are hitting it. Maybe that's what it was. It's just a school of fragments. Yeah, it's caught in the, uh, the orbit of Kepler. All right, well, I did it. Finally crashed the game. And we also uh, got to uh, turn a bunch of planets into stains on the universe itself. Anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed this episode of Universe Sandbox 2, Learning. Until the next time, stay foxy, much love.